everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk Physical Media. My name is John. And I'm Faith. And today on the channel, well, but you guys know all about this already. We're going to talk all things physical media, all things physical media adjacent, and we'll probably just, you know, talk about whatever we want to for about 45 minutes to an hour, try and entertain you guys. And actually, there really wasn't any news this week as far as new 4K announcements. I was searching high and low trying to find anything. The closest I got is apparently Sony is working on a new release, a new scan of the 1981 animated film American Pop, which I haven't seen, but I have had recommended to me numerous times to check out. But really, that was it. So eventually when that comes out, I'll get my hands on that. Mm -hmm. You know, we had some big sales this week as far as Prime Day, so hopefully you guys grab some 4Ks out there because there was a lot on sale. You know, the criteria and Barnes and Noble 50% off sales still going on so yeah you... like during this like Amazon sale did they have like 4k players and stuff like that on sale or yeah I don't I didn't check for 4k players there was a lot of good 4ks on sale because that's something that they might be interested in too you know? oh, unfortunately it's already over the sale so yeah. it was uh, the 11th and 12th yeah so well let us know what you guys got yeah if you got anything of... good you know yeah, let us make, know make sure you're buying stuff from Criterion before well from Barnes and Noble for before that sale ends because there's a lot of good stuff on there. Is that what the whole thing is? Because I saw like Charlie Day was in the Criterion the collection. Cri the Criterion closet. Yeah, like yeah. he was in there too. So is that like a big thing now that well, like old celebrities are doing? They're... Well, yeah, they go to it's that's been going on for a long time. I think they're really trying to. I, okay, so I really think they're trying to push physical media because the money aspect of it too, because that's how they get the revenue. They don't really get much revenue from streaming. Streaming, so. No, Criterion, well, Criterion does have the Criterion channel, so they actually have their own streaming service. Mm -hmm. It's like $10.99 a month, I think, but for the most part, they are, and they have been for a long time, a physical media company. They started way back with Laserdisc mm -hmm. Criterion, but yeah, they have the Criterion closet, and like, they only have, I think, like 1,200 releases. They're just over a 1,000 as far as the releases since the very beginning, because each new release gets numbered, and then they update their stuff to new formats, like, you know, as 4K came along. They were late to 4K, but they didn't want to do it because... They they felt like, and they did, they had Blu-rays that were almost as good a quality and they didn't want to go to 4K because, you know, it becomes more expensive and Criterion mm -hmm. already has it's, some of the most yeah, expensive releases. Yeah. But they also have some of the nicest releases. Mm. Like, I, this week alone, I just reviewed After Hours on 4K and that is a fantastic release. And that just came out. You can buy that for 50% off right now. So that's pretty damn crazy. Uh, this week, I'll be reviewing Breathless from Jean-Luc Godard. That one I'm really excited about. I got that for 50% off. Okay. So there's plenty out there. There's so much good stuff on the Criterion channel and on the Criterion collection. So definitely make sure you're checking that out because these sales only happen twice a year. And really, that's when you should be saving your money up for it because, you know, for a new 4K release, we get to about like 40 bucks and that could be a little tight. Mm. But, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah so... You know, you got to try and, you know, save some money where you can. And speaking of saving money, the SAG strike that just started, that was a big thing well, that me and Faith wanted to talk I, I about. I want to talk about both. I, You know, now it's a collective. With well, the yeah, writers. the WGA and the SAG. The are... reason why I want to talk about both is because, one, they both go together. Well, you know, they both go together. You can't have one without the other point blank um i think the writers deserve a lot more respect than they actually get if the if the actors didn't go on strike it was going to be a real problem for the mm -hmm. writers because yep. already studios don't value writers as much as they value the actors now a lot of people are going to be confused because i've seen already comments about like you know the actors are already overpaid i know what you're thinking you're thinking of the actors like leonardo dicaprio tom cruise tom hanks you know denzel washington the big name actors. any blockbuster name any actor that you go in and you recognize and you say, okay, this person, they're making money. They're making they're money. Making yeah, money. and you could argue that they are overpaid. But for every one of them, there's three regular guys and girls out there who are struggling to pay their rent mm -hmm. every month and they want to make it big in Hollywood. You know, those little bit players, anyone with a speaking line, they're a member of SAG and they're struggling and mm -hmm. now they're going to be on strike because they're fighting for their futures. You know, it's not just about money too, it's about artificial intelligence. The, mm -hmm. the studios wanted to have a clause put in the contracts where they can use your likeness in any future movie because artificial intelligence is able to recreate that. We just actually saw this in Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny where AI 
I was able to scrape kind of through all of Harrison Ford's previous performances and come up with this younger looking character. That's why I actually thought it was one of the best looking de-aging that Disney has ever done. Mm -hmm. And that's because the AI was able to do that. It just sounded like old man Harrison Ford, though. Mm -hmm. That was the only thing and that threw did, me And they, <laughs> they, pro uh, they did it in... Uh Mission Impossible. The whole thing was just regarding AI. Yeah, the, the whole t the whole story. The danger of it if mm. we don't figure it out, truly figure it out. Now, or why whoever's invested into the AI wants it to be this big? Well, that's because the studios want it because that will eliminate you know young. No, no, I'm I'm not. I'm just talking in whole general. In not general, just, just not in movies. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no AI yeah. is definitely going to. It's going to eliminate a lot of jobs in the future if we don't actually put an end to it now, or at least you know get it into a point where it's more managed and more it's controlled, more controlled. Yeah, in a mm -hmm. more controlled environment because unfortunately that's going to replace a lot of people, and that could. I mean, we've been warned about this since. <laughs> Sorry. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> We've been warned about this since 1984's Terminators. We don't learn. We don't learn because, unfortunately, greed runs this planet, and we're seeing it. We're here to talk about movies. We're seeing it right at the top of all these movie studios. Yeah. Look at what they've been doing, and you know they're trying to. They're saying, uh, I heard, saw Bob Iger. Bob Iger is the you know the lead executive over at Disney, and this guy just signed a new contract that is going to keep him at Disney as the CEO until 2026. He's going to be making $27 million a year, and mm -hmm. he's saying that the writers and the actors are being unreasonable. I mean, do you need to be making that much money for you to be making those calls from your ivory tower? Like, that's just, you know, I feel like you just don't have a and connection. That's, <laughs> and that's just what he's getting paid. That's yeah. not other stuff that he's involved Stocks, in. Stocks, investments. Stocks, investments. And that's what they're there to do. You know, they're, they own a lot of buildings that people rent from, mm -hmm. and uh, that's, they make money doing that. And now these people, and the same people that you employ are probably renting to, from you, mm -hmm. and now you're collecting money from them, so... The Writers Guild of America, yeah, WGA. They, uh, some, the guys, one of the head guys said that they're just going to wait for people to lose their jobs, so and... that article was put out without an official source. They want, the source wanted to remain okay. anonymous. Now, that could just, you know, that's kind of tough without somebody actually... Somebody put in, like, a bowl. Yeah, and, and it's kind of, like, just gets people talking about the strike. It kind of gets pe it in people's mind, because... Anyone with a heart, when you hear somebody saying, oh, we want to wait until people start losing their apartments before we start negotiating because it gives them the upper hand, like, you just know that, like, that's going to piss people off. Oh, well, let's be honest. We're going to be, we're going to be honest. We're gonna, uh, that is probably true. That oh, I'm not surprised that somebody would say that in the quietness of, like, their big giant mansion looking down at the regular working class people. Of course. Look, okay, so an example of this would be me and you being this regular working average Americans working in, you know, the beer company, the food industry, just as an average American. Me and Faith are both union members, whether it be I am a Teamsters member, Faith's a UFC, W, uh... Three, well, 342. Local. Well, I didn't want yeah. to give the local uh, away, but uh, yeah, local, but she's yeah. one of their union members i'm a union member i myself actually in 2017 were on strike with the teamsters for a better contract so i have been on the picket line holding a sign i know the whole deal you know the the, mm -hmm. the fears of the possibility of losing your job and yep. losing your livelihood we bought the house that we're in right now while i was on strike so we were petrified we didn't know if it was going to go through because you know, we lost income, we were on unemployment because you can get unemployment while you're on strike, but mm -hmm. it's not enough to circumvent all your bills. Mm -hmm. Luckily, we did have help from the Teamsters in paying our bills, but a lot of people aren't that lucky, you know, to keep people on strike with no income. You know, you got to hope you get that help. And right now, WGA has been on strike for, oh, I think like Since a month, May. May. Mm -hmm. And like, they're probably at least going to be on strike until September. Same thing with SAG. It's just a really scary thing for a lot of people right now. And this doesn't just affect the actors. Um, actually, my shop Top steward at the time when I was on strike, he moved on to a different Teamsters local what that does involve, you know, set building for not just plays on Broadway, but for films that film in New York. So now he's pretty much on strike too, or at least his workload mm. has been very limited or, you know, so it's going to hurt him as well. It's going to hurt a lot of these different people. It's not just the actors. And I think that's what people have to realize that it's really just fighting against like these corporations like Warner Brothers and Disney mm. and, you know, all these big studios, Paramount. But I think this is good because I think we have people other than um, just average Americans now feeling the raft of 
big corporate greed mm -hmm. and they're feeling it just and they might be rich don't get me wrong you know the, the people that are rich but they're still feeling it oh, yeah. um and it takes those people to speak out and wealthier people to speak out um in order to get this resolved because well that's why sad going on strike is such a big deal because now you have a face to it now you have those big name actors on strike holding picket signs, mm -hmm. and at least now the studios are forced to take notice. When it was just writers, unfortunately writers are not considered a huge part of the, you know, movie which making is system, absolutely which is insane. Crazy. But like, think about it, the writers went on strike, I believe it was back in 2007, and movies like Quantum of Solace got really hurt by that, Lost, I think the second season of Breaking Bad, which only had a, the seasons were shorter because you had no writers. You know, the direct, you know, when you adjust stuff on set, without having a writer there and you're doing it on the fly, it's just not gonna work out the same. So we devalued our writers for no good reason. This is actually the first time that the writers and SAG have been on strike the first together since 1960. So this is like a big turning point in Hollywood. Mm. The business model is just gonna have to be completely changed. I did a video on this channel about what studios need to do. You don't need to be spending $295 million on a movie or $340 million on a movie. Not anymore, but well, people are going to the I'm going to put it much. in perspective. In 2020, where all the studios and everything were pretty much shut down, mm -hmm. you couldn't, you know, create anything. So what did we get? We got a bunch of reality TV, and that was the major sh turn into reality TV, what it is now. No, and that's also, 2020 is also when they started to overly invest in streaming services. Mm -hmm. And that's hurt their bottom line a lot because... Yep. They thought that was the future. They wanted a piece of that Netflix pie. And they all started going all in on streaming services. Back in 2021, that's when HBO decided that they wanted to put all their movies on HBO Max day and date so that they would be simultaneously released in theaters and on Max same day, no matter mm -hmm. what. So you had the option if you wanted to go see it in theaters or if you wanted to go watch it at home. People became more aware of streaming services. They started to invest their money into it. So consumers were going to the theaters less. And then when you know what, the next year when you started to notice in 2022, that wasn't working and you want to go back to the movie theater model. But unfortunately, you've made agreements with these streaming services to put your films on streaming services 45 days instead of the usual 90 days that you had before the pandemic so now consumers are aware of this and they're just not going to the theaters as much mm -hmm. so you have to shrink your budgets you really have to change your entire model unfortunately streaming services are just not the most aren't making enough revenue for these studios that's on them it's not on the consumer it's not on the actors it's not on the writers that's on you unfortunately the the world we live in the rich will not be the ones that get hurt on this they are going to take it from the bottom first because they see those people as expendable and then the people up top they're the ones that get hurt last and unfortunately once the rich people start getting hurt that's it. They're coming for the poor. They're coming for the pe the middle class. They're coming for anyone. Anyone doing the actual work, that's the people that are going to be the first ones to get hurt. And we're seeing that now. Like We're seeing the rich people up at the top of these corporations, up at the top of Disney like Bob Iger, up at the top of Warner Brothers Discovery, the ones that are just cutting everything. At, you know, They're only caring about what that spreadsheet says. They're cutting mm. every everything that they possibly can. They're erasing art. Like Batgirl was filmed by Warner Brothers and it was never released so they can get a tax write down, which I still don't understand how you can make something, spend all that money, but if you just choose not to release it, you get a tax break on yeah, it. Yeah, that's your fault that yeah. you didn't release it. Yeah, Why? Well, that, that this is the problem. Mm -hmm. This is the problem. And, and like, the government has set up these tax breaks to help the rich, mm -hmm. while still the middle class and the poor are still paying all the I bills. I don't. Re <laughs> I don't think that we realize the power that we have. Mm -hmm. If we all collectively just say we're not going for this. No more. I'm not going. I'm not going to this movie. I'm not going to watch your movies. I'm not going to do this. And we're not going to take it anymore. We're not going to take it. No. No! We're not going <laughs> to take it. But that's literally what that is about. Oh, it's yeah. about not letting these pe letting people control this very small amount of people control the larger group. We have the numbers. Yeah, but the thing is, is they want to divide and conquer. So mm -hmm. you'll start seeing things come out mm -hmm. in the coming weeks about SAG and Writers Guild of America and saying that the they're negotiating in bad faith and that they're being unreasonable. And you're going to hear all this from 
the heads of these corporations and who really don't care about them, but they want to change the public opinion of just not just their corporation, but of them themselves. And they're going to try and turn it against the majority because, you know, that's how you win. And that's what well, you're going to have to start looking for. In the next like few they weeks. did that with and your company is a small company and they try to do that. Uh -huh. They try to put out in the papers that you guys weren't being fair and you you guys were the ones. Yeah. Meanwhile, meanwhile all, you, all you wanted was your pension. We That's just wanted it. our pension. That was it. You yeah. just wanted your pension, and but that was We too weren't much. even fighting for raises. We no. just didn't want to lose our pensions. Yeah. So that was unfortunate. But that's, again, that's what happens. Rich people, because they paid for our pension and they didn't want to pay for it anymore. And now, you know what? That corporation has pretty much crippled their entire business from that because mm. they decided to... You know what? They wanted to hurt the workers who did all the work for them, and they didn't want to lose anything on their own, even though they have multiple houses and multiple cars and all that stuff that they don't need, but they would rather take from the people who actually bust their ass for them. And unfortunately, you know, that's not just the job that I work for. That's many jobs yeah, my, this planet. My, my job, their contract's up in October. They haven't even been in the room with mm. my union. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I, I hope... And, and I know it's hard because people have bills, you know, and it's hard, and, and they're counting on people having to pay their bills and needing to needing. Well, money. that's what it is. They want to they're back counting everyone. on everybody yeah. needing that. So we so we don't stick together because, some, the, that... for example, you know, I, I, I work full time and it's overtime, but there's a lot of part time workers at my job as well. What they do a lot of times when they're down a budget, they cut the part time in hours. Mm -hmm. What they try to do now is they try to divide the part timers and the full time workers there to kind of say, because we have our 40 hours guaranteed, we have our money guaranteed. Mm -hmm. And they want us to say, listen, you, we, we need the work. You guys need to get on the boat, too, you know. It's the same thing at my job. Like my union is filled with truck drivers and uh, warehouse guys. We're both in the same union. So what they try and do when contract situations are coming up, they look at the majority, whether it's more drivers or more warehouse mm. at the time. It depends on the contract. They don't care. So whatever one it is, they try and give the better deal to the majority so that the contract passes through so they don't got to pay both. Mm -hmm. It's all about that. It's just like that every single way until SAG went on strike. The Writers Guild was going to have a hard time because, you know, there's not really a face for them. But so. this includes stunt people, stunt oh, workers. Oh, everything. Everyone who's I have in a SAG. Friend in, uh, well, I wouldn't say friend, but like he's somebody I know. Um, he's a stunt performer. You know, people are telling him, you know, you guys are greedy. Da, da, da. Yeah, because Those then people, people are in a way. do not make... They when they make money, they make money, but it's very far. You don't always work. You're not always no, working. No, you could go a whole year just going mm -hmm. audition, audition. Like your people are gonna be thinking when they think actor, they're gonna be thinking about the Hollywood elitists, the real rich actors. That's what you're gonna be thinking about. But even but that's those not people, everybody. But even those people, a lot of them aren't always working. There's only a handful yeah. that are continuously working. Yeah, only a handful that are continuously working. Yeah. Because I do agree, some actors are very overpaid and you should adjust those contracts. Mm -hmm. But that's the real minority in this whole thing. It, you gotta really think about the smaller people. Just because they're actors or stuntmen and you might think, oh, you know, they probably live these glorious lives. They don't, they don't. They struggle too, just like you and me. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that it, they're union members, they deserve fair living wages as well. I think you only need $26,000, if I'm correct, to get your medical from SAG. So you have to make $26,000 a year to get that. Like, that's crazy just for them to have their medical. So, and some actors don't hit that each mm -hmm. year. They have two jobs where maybe they're waiting tables, mm -hmm. but they want to hit that threshold to have their medical. So uh, these are real people, real people, real hardworking people. So we definitely, One I One thing I'm, I'm grateful for, for like with this whole situation is that a lot of actors, they're either in LA or New York mm -hmm. and both towns, both areas, are very big union supporters. Mm -hmm. I know New York is extremely huge when it comes to union work. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully we see a change and, you know, they do right. And if they don't, we as people that enjoy these films and enjoy these, you know, their hard work that they put in, regardless of how you feel they yeah. get paid or whatever. This is hard work. You know how long that list of credits is um, when each movie, like, you know, we you see the three or four names on top, but the reason why credits last like four minutes, look how many different people work mm -hmm. on a movie. Look at the animators on yep. these movies. Uh, and I was reading this yesterday. Like, that's why the animation for a lot of these, like the, the CGI, it hasn't looked poor. These people get worked to the bone. Mm. And they only make like, Fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year with forced overtime up to like seventy two hours a week, so they're getting put through the ringer too. Like these are they like, just do it because they love it. 
And when you we push just people away, ho- push people away from that, they're not going to want to do it anymore. No, we just associate Hollywood with you know the the actual corporations mm-hmm. that run Hollywood, but really that's the minority of the people who do these jobs, and we have to be aware of that because we're going to be hearing about this for a very long time until it gets settled. And as the more people that are aware of it, the more people that are aware of the truth of the situation, hopefully, you know. It gets worked out mm. in the right way, and hopefully this is a shift just for our entire planet because things could get scary, and we mm-hmm. hope it doesn't. But enough of the negativity. Let's dive into <laughs> some of these questions and start talking about some movies again, okay. some positivity in the movie yeah. world. So let's do that right now. Um, our first question is actually going to be from Lorenzo Harris, Man of God, and he said, what are your top five favorite Eddie Murphy movies? Oh, okay. So I was thinking about this the other day. Okay. This is not in order because I didn't really think about like my favorite. Like oh, I, I didn't put them in order. I know but my top two. When I say them, I'm gonna probably put them in order. I just want to throw the names out there and then I'll readjust. Nutty Professor. Nutty Professor's in your top five. Wow. Oh, Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely phenomenal. He plays multiple characters. Oh yeah, such like, a great job. Just like, like he plays that, the whole family. That's freaking yeah. talent. And then he's Buddy Love. Then he's Buddy Love. And, he's buddy and that's love. talent. Oh yeah. I think that movie showed probably the most talent. When well, you think about it. Coming to America, he did the same thing. Yes, D- yes, 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 yes. Which is my second that, favorite. And I was just gonna say that. Yeah, I love coming com- to America. Coming to America. Then I would say life. Life is. I knew you were gonna pick life. I, I knew it when you absolutely love life. Life is great. Um, honestly, I love Eddie Mo- Murphy in that movie, but you know who stole the show? Martin Lawrence. No. Bernie Mac. Oh, Bernie Mac steals the show uh, anything he's in. I is the poppy. <laughs> <laughs> I is the poppy. I is the poppy. Yeah. I is the poppy. Ah, I is the poppy. <laughs> I love Bernie I Mac. I love him. Uh, R.I.P. Bernie yeah. Mac. My ab- One of my absolute favorites. One he of the nailed, kings of comedy. He nailed every role. Oh, yeah. Every absolutely. role he was in. Yeah, House Party 3. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah. Now I got to catch Bad Santa. Uh, yeah, every, every role. Oh, he yeah. nails it. Oh, yeah. I think... He he didn't have um, a great opportunity to really he show. He never what, got the starring role. But he, um, let me tell you. Although the Bernie Mac show was pretty popular. I think he could have killed it. Mm-hmm. Um, I still think he's in my Best top away, five young. comedians ever. Um, so that's number three. Then I would say. You haven't even picked my favorite yet, which is my number one. Really? Yeah. What's your favorite? My favorite is Beverly Hills Cut. I was going to say that, one. too. Disturbing the piece I got thrown out of a window. What's the fucking charge for getting pushed out of a moving car, huh? Jaywalking? But uh, that's one of them. Like, yeah. that's in there. And then... I love Beverly Hills Cop. Directed by Martin Brest. Beverly Hills Cop 2, directed by Tony Scott. It's pretty good also. Beverly Hills Cop 3 is absolutely horrible. But the first two, Stone Cold Classics, but the first one's obviously... It's the best. I love that movie so, so, so much. It's a really, it's an Eddie Murphy showpiece. Because mm. that movie was originally supposed to star Sylvester Stallone. Okay. And it wasn't supposed to be as funny. But then they kind of molded it around Eddie Murphy after Stallone mm-hmm. left. Stallone went and made So Cobra. that's your number one. Absolutely. And then my number two is Coming to America. Okay. And then my number three, I, I'm actually having a hard time picking what my number three is. It's probably either 48 Hours. Or Trading Places. Trading, trading Places, places is, is a my great last one. one. That was, yeah, oh, Trading yeah, Places. I'm actually one. in the mood to watch Trading Places, but it's kind of a low key Christmas movie. So it kind of. It, eh, no, we could watch it anytime. You know, it takes place in the winter. I, I love time. how mm-hmm. c- Coming to America, there's a little Easter egg. Mortimer, we're back. Yeah, I know. Well, the, the two guys <laughs> running the yeah. freaking who have the $1 bet. You yeah. Know. Dan Aykroyd's great in that movie, too. We're back. Yeah. What's their names? I can't remember. They're like, we're back! And they got the money. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so I, those are my favorites. But we pretty much have them. I actually, the same. you know what I was thinking about? Boomerang it. is pretty good. Boomerang is alright. But you didn't really like that. No, movie. It's, that's why I said it's alright. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm actually a fan. I mean, people hate this movie. Uh, the Adventures of Pluto Nash. <laughs> that was a pretty good one. And you know, ones that you probably don't like that I like? What? Dr. Doolittle. I hate the Doctor Doolittle movies. I love the first one, the I second one now, but the the first one I really like Doctor Doolittle. But I, that's not in my favorite. I realize I don't like any Doctor Doolittle movie because it's like just so many remakes, and then because that's actually technically a remake. And then Robert Downey Judy, Robert Downey Jr. did the Doolittle fucking one that came out a few years ago. That one's also atrocious. I don't know; those movies just don't work. For I. Me. Uh, what about Donkey and the Shrek movies? Yeah, 
Or, I, mean, I wouldn't put it in my favorite. In my he favorite also was in, didn't he do the voice in uh, Mulan also? The lizard. Yeah. I forgot what his name was. I know, but he also did the but voice. But I, I mean, I, I, I'm going to stick with mine. Just live action ones. Yeah. Life, Nutty Professor, Coming to America, Trading Places. His 80s stuff is the best. Yeah. Really, it's the Nutty Professors in the 90s. And I still, I'm going to stand by uh, The Adventures of Pluto Nash. I think that movie is a little bit underrated. It's considered yeah. one of the worst movies ever, but you know what? It's pretty good. I don't think it's that bad. He hasn't really done too much sense, although Dolomite was a pretty good movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dolomite and then I liked, I liked the one he just did with Jonah Hill. Oh, I yeah. Liked you that people. Movie. Yeah, he, was, was, he was funny. You got it? little glimpses of the old Eddie in there. Yeah. Um, you know, Coming to America 2 was, it was all right. I think that James Earl Jones was the best part of that, where he wants to have his funeral and then die at the end of it. <laughs> I thought that was hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want, he wanted to see his funeral. He wanted to be at his funeral. I thought that was the funniest part of that whole movie <laughs> he wanted to see who came he wanted to see how they would do it and then he's like all right i'm ready to die he dies. <laughs> <laughs> are we idiots or what oh, it's so funny <laughs> all right lorenzo that was a great question man thank you so much uh and now we're going to start the kevin l portion of the questions which he gives some great questions he's got four this week and he asks what are your top three and bottom three original shows on streaming this is uh, you? This is all you. No, you can do it too. Uh, original shows on streaming. Is this all time or like recent? It just says all time. This is original shows on streaming. So it's not. It's but not a, a lot of It has shows. to go right to streaming. So I figured. Well, okay, so Stranger Things. Stranger Things was my number would one. Would be right there. Yeah. Absolutely. Hundred percent number one. Hundred percent. So I'm a big Game of Thrones fan. Well, so uh, that never went directly to streaming. Well, House of Dragon. House did. of Dragon did, but I guess that's both. Yeah. I guess yeah. That counts. Okay. Well, so I won't put Game of Thrones in there. Huh? Yeah. So I'm going to say... Um, I figured that your number one would be a show we talked about this week, actually. Well, How I Met Your Father? Yeah. Okay, I was going to add that in, but yeah. you just always have to... Uh, I want to make sure you didn't forget. I would you, never forget that. Because you were that, really... I was really excited this week because I watched the finale of... How, I don't know if you guys are How I Met Your Mother fans, but now they have... This is the second season of How I Met Your Father. Hilary, Hilary Duff is absolutely amazing the cast of how i met your father absolutely amazing and i love how they are keeping the show original but putting some things from the original show to bring us back to the nostalgia part point to when we first watched that show me and you caught on to how i met your mother pretty late we i think it was season eight yeah, we were very late. We I remember when we late. went to Vegas, because that show, I think, started in 05. And we went to Vegas in 2012, and I remember watching an episode mm -hmm. in our hotel room, and I was like, this show is funny. Yeah. And then we came back, and we, yeah, we, then we were able to watch the last couple seasons live, but we mm -hmm. were very late to that party. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I love how they're keeping it from the original show, because the original show, they did have some things in there that might have not, that people might not look that today as like something that they find funny you know like the mm. you know neil patrick harris character and hasn't aged well and hasn't aged well but a lot of these shows scrubs have an age has an age no, and that's just shows. times change and, you yeah. know as long as we learn from like our mistakes as far as things we did in the past but you don't erase them yeah don't erase them i'm looking at you the french connection in disney you don't yeah. erase <laughs> the past okay like it's there we did it. Like, yeah. You can't just pretend it didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> so I love that they kept to the original format, but they're still, but it's original in its own way. And the last episode, I literally clapped. I clapped because I was so excited for them to bring back something from the original show. Mm. And I don't know if you guys watched the show, How I Met Your Father, but the original How I Met Your Mother, Marshall and Willie were such a great couple. But there was, at the end of the first season, Lily and Marshall break up, Ted and Robin get together, mm -hmm. and it's raining. How it ended, the last episode of How I Met Your Father, is Hilary Duff and her love interest got together, and a character who was married already ends their marriage. Really? And it was raining. And they come out, they, she, they, they kiss, Hilary Duff and her character kiss, they go back into the bar, and they see this guy sitting just like Marshall was sitting on the step. He was sitting on a stool on the bar with, with the, the ring in his hand. Uh, the same way. Oh, and I literally f was like, this is perfect. Yeah. Perfect. You're going to laugh at this, but 
That's love right. is blind. I freaking love that show. I think it's reality and people yeah, hate a big reality. Trash reality TV but person. I don't think love is blind is trash reality. I think love is blind in the original, not not the second, third, fourth. I think those are people that are just trying to get famous. But the original cast of Love Is Blind truly just said, I, "I'm done dating. I I can't do this anymore. Let these specialists find somebody for me, gotcha, and match me." And that is still probably the only season that has people still together and in love and just thriving. So the originality of the first season, I absolutely love. Do you have like a bottom three of shows you've watched that you've hated? Oof. Because you've watched a lot of TV. <sighs> I don't watch shows I hate. I, well, that, well, you went into it and you didn't but like I don't. You don't stick to it. There, if there's nothing, I don't do that. Oh. I, I usually finish. Uh, but if you finished it, did, was there anything that like left you like ah that sucked or anything that disappointed Honestly, you? Honestly, no. I, I you are a little bit of a positive Pete, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. You always because you've shown me some stuff and I'm like okay, well that wasn't good. But like what? <laughs> I just off the top of my head, I'm sure you've shown me movies and stuff like that, but not really shows because I can't really answer this question. I don't really watch TV, especially like, well the Stranger Things was for Stranger you. Stranger Things is mine. That's really like that's. Very few shows that I will be like, I'll perk up when they come back around because I'm really committed to movies, especially now. Oh, another one. What? Severance. Oh, Severance. That's one. Severance, Severance was great. I'm Apple wait, TV I've Plus. been waiting for that to come back because Severance is the, great. They, I'm surprised you didn't say anything from Power. Like, those are stars. Yeah, today. yeah, but I think. Oh, wait, actually, that would be on stars anyway, so I guess yeah, that wouldn't Yeah, that's not streaming original. Yeah, because Apple TV is an original, so yeah, that is Severance. And yeah, Severance. Severance probably the best one of the best tv shows out and i'm just waiting for another season and actually season. blackbird speaking of apple tv that's a recent show that i actually watched like the mini series i can get into because they're short so mm -hmm. those ones i really do like that uh mayor mayor of east town mm -hmm. that was a good one from last year you like that one yeah that was a good one kate winslet was awesome in that show see he watches more dramas i like you watch you know, everything. I watch everything. I like sitcoms. I watch, but there hasn't really been a great sitcom. So when I'm watching How I Met Your Father, I'm just in in I awe. I started watching Parks and Rec. <laughs> yeah, like, because yeah, because there's the no uh, Albert Elementary, Albert and Elementary, and How I Met Your Father. Yeah. Those are the two sitcoms that I really do enjoy. Abbott Elementary is but, one of the uh, best not cast shows ever. I know he can. It's an yeah. ABC show. Uh, and I did get a bunch of Emmy nominations, but uh, I think we answered that question to the best of our Because I don't really have bad shows. If I see it, most of the shows that I enjoy, mm -hmm. that I watch and I see, and I'm like, I'm going to put it on, I end up liking it. Because there's something you in there You find something. That, you you know. are very positive. It's very mm -hmm. rare, even when we leave the movies, that you're disappointed. Because I've left the movie theater disappointed yes, a lot. Yes, because I, I know that this is somebody's art, regardless of how I take it. And how I... I'm like, I, I would never say something sucked. What about a Serbian film? Well, that's not art to me. <laughs> that's somebody's art. That's porn. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> trash. I mean, I wouldn't so. say all that. It's a, it's nothing in that is real. It's still no, no. but it's a, but why make a film like that? Shock. That's what they were going for with that. Uh, that's disgusting. Uncle V made us watch that. Disgusting. Won't, won't forgive him. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, next up is from Kevin L. What is the toughest decision you've made in your life? And if you could go back in time, would you do anything different? Mm. When did we get married? April second. Uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that's a uh, big one. <laughs> uh, buying a home. Was probably the toughest decision. I agree. I was gonna say. And um, and if I couldn't go back, we would we do, would we would do things different. Yes, I know would. I would do different. I would not let him make the decisions. Should never let me do that. But I didn't know this five, six years ago. So, like I said, April second, two thousand seventeen. <laughs> for me, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, for me, maybe. Yeah. No, only because John is very different from me. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a certain way. I'm not going to say I grew up rich because I didn't grow up rich. Definitely grew up with more money than I did. I grew up comfortable and I, I, I was used to certain things, you know, in, in my life. So when we bought our house, right, we're going around, we wanted an area, we wanted to move into our, this town that we're in now. So we were looking around our town. We saw about th three houses. This was the third house. Or, well, this is the we third saw, house we put a, um, a, a bit, but we saw about four or five. Yeah, we saw a bunch. Um, and every house, John stepped in 
this is it. This is the one. This is it. We're going to move. Okay. And then we would put a bit in because I'm going to, again, as, a, as his wife, I'm going to let him make these decisions. Don't do that. Because That's your fault. I, but how would I know this about you? You, you know. Okay, <laughs> what, let's let's. I'm, you know, I'm clearly a bad decision maker. So every house was great, and then even the real estate agents would be like, ah, I don't think this should be good for you, or whatever. So we would go to the next house. Okay, this one's the one. Blah blah blah. Ah, this this fell up, fell through. So in my mind, whatever fell through wasn't for us. Mm -hmm. We stepped into this house, and let me tell you, atrocious. It looked like... Oh, it doesn't look like it does now. No, but it still it still needs a lot of work. Well, it was built in the 1800s, I feel like. No, 1930-something. But <laughs> it's a small bungalow. We don't have a big house. It's a small bungalow. And I didn't really look at everything. I don't think we really truly looked at everything when we went through this house. You were just so desperate to get a house with the dog for the dogs. I wanted dogs. And if, we could, if I could go back, I think I would wait it out a little bit see more houses and truly pick a house that i can call a home because i feel like this house you have to make it you had to make it a home and i think we're we are not peop two people that like he's not handy mm. you know so me personally i couldn't make a house a home i just need him to be that is something that uh, if I would have known, because I kept on saying, are you going to be able to do this? Are you going to be able to do that? Oh, yeah, 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 I could do uh, it. Has never done it. Never done it. I've done some stuff. What have you done? I've mowed the lawn. I've cut some weeds. I've uh, I've grilled. Let's see what else do homeowners do. I, uh, you know, I put the air conditions every single year. <laughs> okay. And then I take them out. So that would be my <laughs> situation. And I think that's why we want to move. So we can move into a place. Something that's already done. That yeah. is already done. And we can just make our house a home. Yeah. You know, I feel like this house is very hard to make a home because there's so many things. Everything. I, I was talking to Shamrock about this. It's just like every something always goes wrong. Like this past week, mm -hmm. um, our dog, we have a Rottweiler, half half Rottweiler, half German Shepherd. And then we have a little dog, about medium sized dog. We don't know what he is. Nobody can seem to figure it out. But he's <laughs> the cutest puppy ever. Yeah. But our big dog, um, another dog walks by the house. She goes fucking nuts like she's never seen another dog or person in her life before. <laughs> so she throws her entire weight at this bay window we have and she pushed the whole glass out of frame and broke it. So, you know, now we're dealing with that. So it's a real fun situation. Yeah. For us. <laughs> so, but like yeah. things like that happen all the time. Last year we had a tree fall on our neighbor's shed and his fence and you know, as a homeowner, if you guys are homeowners, you guys know it's there's no getting ahead. <laughs> no, and that's the thing is like I would want a house where you can just go in and just live. do it the way you want to do live. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously things break regardless of if it's new or old. But a lot of times those things when it's newer, it's smaller things. It's yeah. not huge, you know. Well, you're pretty old and you're broken down. Okay. So So what's <laughs> your decision? No, I agree with that. I mean, I would, I would go back I, if I had to really make a decision, I would probably wouldn't take the job I have right now. Uh, my regular Joe job because it I hate it with a passion and I've hated it for a very long time, but it does pay the bills, so I am thankful for that. I have a job that it gives me vacation time, medical uh, pension and you know retirement but it's just the environment I work in is just horrible with some of uh, some really horrible people with some really horrible owners and managers that makes it very uncomfortable to go there every day but unfortunately you know we all need jobs and mm. you never know if the grass is greener on the other mm. on the other side That's the thing but I think I would have spent more time looking for a better job instead of diving into this because I got blinded by the money at the time which hasn't really increased in almost 10 years but at the time it was a really big jump so if I could go back I would have spent more time looking for a better job and not just diving into a job that kind of blinded me with the future could be because mm. the future didn't work out as I had anticipated. So that would be the big thing that I would make a change with. So that's actually kind of one of the reasons why I started this YouTube channel is because eventually I would like this, at least some form of this, to be my permanent job. But you know, that takes time. It's just like uh, anything else. You got to invest your time if, for the future that you want. Mm -hmm. So that's the one thing I would change. And now we got two more questions to answer from Kevin L. And both of them are ranking questions. Uh, he asks first, how would you rank the following movies? The Last Action Hero, Con Air, Tenet, Kill Bill, John Wick 4, Full Metal Jacket, Seven, and The Dark Knight. Okay. 
So, let me, can I see your phone? That's my ranking right there. Little, okay. Wow. Well, so okay. I can read, I'll read mine while you do that. So, okay. Uh, you want me to read yours? I'll read. Oh, okay. All right, I'll read it. So my number one would be seven. Absolutely love that movie. David Fincher classic. Number two would be The Dark Knight. Obviously, it's one of the greatest movies ever made. It's not my favorite Nolan or my favorite Batman, but it's still a fantastic movie. Number three might be a surprise to some people, but I just absolutely love this movie. And that's Con Air. I remember I used to get made <laughs> fun of when I was in high school because for a long time, until I started seeing more movies, Con Air was in my top ten films of all time. I just think, you know, they nailed that perfect cheesy action movie and Nicolas Cage doing a ridiculous accent. Put the bunny in mm -hmm. the box. And then at number four, I would have Full Metal Jacket. That movie is great, but I think we all can agree that the first half of that movie is still better than the second half, even if the second half is really good. Tenet at number five. Love Tenet. Uh, every time I watch it, I love it even more. So I'm sure eventually that could rise up this list. Kill Bill, I assume you're counting both. That movie's a fantastic film, but actually, I didn't love it as much as I used to love it the last time I watched it, if that makes oh, sense. Oh, I think that's total, utter freaking I know bullshit. You're a big, yeah, I know you're that's a big That's utter Kill Bill. bullshit because it wasn't until Matt said, No, but then oh, I rewatched them. I don't, I didn't really like it. But then, then I rewatched so, them. But then you rewatched them after watching them how many times and all of a sudden well, you I don't started, like them? As, I, come on. I just said I didn't like them as much. It doesn't mean, it's Quentin Tarantino. It's still like an 8.5. I think 5. that's bullshit. And then after that, it's not bullshit. It's my honest truth and okay. you're going to respect my truth okay and then after that i got john wick number four <laughs> because i've only seen it once and you know i can't put it that high yet and then dead last i have on this list the last action hero which is still a really good arnold schwarzenegger movie let's not sell that film short you know it's very ahead of its time very meta really love that movie and seeing stallone and terminator 2 poster is still pretty damn cool in my opinion but that's okay. how i would rank them but how would you rank those my lady okay so <sighs> kill bill I figured you were going to do that. I know you're a big Kill Bill person. Because it's my favorite Tarantino. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely love Kill Bill. I don't know how all of a sudden you change your opinion, but okay. Opinions change. Time um, changes everything. Then I would say The Dark Knight. Same number two. Yeah. Uh, Con Air. Con see? And he would, Con I love Con, Con Air. Con you know Air that. is great. Um, then I would say Kill uh, John Wick 4. Okay. Pretty high already. Uh huh. Tenet. All right. Tenet is great job. And the rest uh, I didn't see. So. You never saw Full Metal Jacket? Mm -mm. Wow. Or Last Action Hero. Mm -mm. Eh, I'm not surprised at Full Metal Jacket, but I am surprised on, uh, on uh, Last Action Hero. I thought you would have seen that at this point in your life. But I get that. I think I have the 4K. If I don't, I should have the 4K. Matt definitely does. But yeah, that's how we'd rank that. And now we're going to move on to our last question, Kevin L. This is a similar thing. It says, how would you rank the following directors? So you're going to have on his list, Stanley Kubrick, Steven Spielberg, Martin Scorsese, David Fincher, Christopher Nolan, James Cameron, Alfred Hitchcock, and Quentin Tarantino. Ooh, that's a tough one for me. Oh, yeah. Well, there's um, my list so, if you want to look at it real quick. Okay, so I would say Tarantino. That's my number, number one. one. Yeah. Um, then I would probably say Steven Spielberg. You'd put Spielberg that high. Okay. Yeah, because he has that. a lot of oh, rewatchables. Of course. Maybe E.T. Um, then I would say Alfred Hitchcock. 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 I love him. I know you're a big birds fan. Yeah, right? I I love black and white. Yeah. I love old, I I love old. You do love old movies. Um, and Alfred Hitchcock was the king because of thrillers that back is in the, the day. original. Um, like this is what everybody looks to. Yes, he. You know, this he, is the standard. Of he film. set a lot of standards. Yes. and he was just making movie after movie after movie at the time. You know, Psycho, Birds. Uh, Rear window, mm -hmm. north by northwest, mm -hmm. rope, like you know, lifeboat. So many. Mm -hmm. He was the king of it. Then uh, I would say Christopher Nolan. Love Nolan. Uh, James Cameron. Yeah, James Cameron does what James Cameron does. I don't really James... know David Fincher or you do Stanley know... Kubrick. So. so you do know them. You just might not realize that they've made movies like Gone Girl was made by David Fincher. Oh, Seven, I like that movie. Fight Club. Um, oh, so yeah, I would say he's probably before uh, Panic Room, before um, Stanley Kubrick. Yeah, Stanley Kubrick though has directed uh, The Shining, Two Thousand One: mm -hmm. A Space Odyssey, Eyes mm -hmm. Wide Shut. Um, I'm not the saying The Killing eh, to like The well, Shining, but the, you know that's not my favorite kind of. Movie. No, you. I, I get that. Like, um, I'm sure you haven't seen all of his movies. Paths of Glory is rising up. My Kubrick yeah, no. list. I love that movie. So if I was gonna do this. 
It's going to go Tarantino, number one. Martin Scorsese at number two, because Martin Scorsese is one of the greatest to ever do it. And mm. I go back and forth if Scorsese is better than Tarantino, because Scorsese has made more movies. Still making movies. Killers of the Flower Moon is coming out this year. Christopher Nolan I have at number three. I love Christopher Nolan. Yeah, anytime and, he makes a movie, you're there. Even if oh, it's my so. God. I was just talking to some. <laughs> doesn't matter. First of all, he doesn't have a bad movie here, right? Um, Christopher Nolan... If he has a okay. movie coming out that year, that is my most anticipated movie of the year. So, like, this year, my most anticipated movie of 2023 was Oppenheimer. When Tenet was coming out, it was Tenet. Even Dunkirk. I don't love Dunkirk. If you guys saw my rankings list, I'm not a Dunkirk guy. Still, I was there day one. I saw that in IMAX. I had a shitty grin on my face because it's another Nolan movie. I love what the guy does. So, he's at number three. And at number four, I got David Fincher. Again, I love David Fincher. You know, he's got a couple misses in there. Alien 3 is not great. And uh, his most recent movie, uh, Mank, was... It was alright, but it definitely didn't live up to his standards that he's had in his previous movies, like with The Social Network and Seven, we've talked about. Even The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Did yeah, you know I he like did that? Movie, yeah. yeah, see, I told you. Fincher's great. Don't sleep on Fincher. And yeah, then, he's, he is more my style, I think. Well, he's more modern. Gone Girl is like in my top ten of all time movies. Gone so. Girl was a great movie theater experience for us too. We had yeah, a great that time. was such a twist, and I love how the twist came at the middle. I know. I, know. I, mean, I was never. I wasn't expecting. Nobody that. was expecting. I thought they were setting. I mean, if you seen, if you read the book. Well, yeah, you knew it was coming, yeah, but we but didn't read the book, I so we know. had no idea that was coming. They were just setting it up like Ben Affleck was this monster, and then little did we know. That it was although that. he's not that innocent. No, though. no, that's, that's the whole point of the movie. Is yeah. that. He, he hates her, but he still loves her. Yeah, and he's a flawed human being yeah, himself. Yeah, she's flawed, and they're oh, just well, going to live obviously. with it. And unfortunately, they got to live together after all this, because you know what? What solves a marriage, a broken marriage? A baby. That's how my parents ended up with my brother Ryan. <laughs> And the marriage ended one year later. I'm so sorry. <laughs> cut that, cut that. Cut I'm that. not cutting that at all. <laughs> I want Ryan to know what he was. <laughs> cut that, cut that. <laughs> and then after David Fincher, I got Steven Spielberg. I love Spielberg. Obviously, he's one of the greatest directors ever. But Steven Spielberg has some movies. He has a lot of movies in there I don't run back to. So I can't put him any higher than like guys like David Fincher. And then I have Stanley Kubrick. I love Stanley Kubrick. But again, he just has not as many films. And I don't run back to every single one of his films, like Spartacus. I'm not a big fan of Spartacus at no. all. So I don't run back to that. But other than that, you know, pretty much masterpiece after masterpiece. And then I have Alfred Hitchcock, because again, like Faith would say, you know, he's really one of the originators, one of the best to ever do it. You know, movies like Psycho are all-time classics. He has a ton of all-time classics. Movies that you might not even realize that he directed. He's just one of the best to ever do it. And then at last, this might surprise people, is James Cameron. James Cameron directed my favorite film ever. He directed Terminator 2. But I, other than Terminator and Terminator 2 and Aliens, you know, James Cameron, he's kind of like a mixed bag. Like, I love The Abyss. True Lies is great. Uh, you know, but then he gets to Titanic. And Titanic is good. I really love Titanic. But now he's, since Titanic in 1997, all he's made is two Avatar movies. Mm. And that's, what, 25, 26 years of just mm. Avatar movies? And he's, that's all it looks like he's going to be making for the rest of his career? That's mm. really disappointing to me. And yeah. also, a lot of those movies haven't gotten released on 4K. So, again, just disappointment. Screw you, James Cameron. No. <laughs> I won't say it, because I did. James Cameron is amazing. And, again, he gave me the gift of the Terminator, so I'll always love him for that. Yeah. But I just want him to do other things other than Avatar, because we're not an Avatar family here. So, mm. But that's it. But anyway, guys, uh, you have anything else you want to say to the kids before we get out of here? I don't know. No, no, nothing. Nothing, right? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, guys, make sure you leave questions and comments for next week's episode of the show. Anything you want to ask us, just feel free to comment in the comment section below. And let us know what you guys think of the w, uh, the WGA and SAG strike. What are your feelings on it? We would love to... I thought you to... was going to say WWE. Yeah, well, I do want to know what you guys... <laughs> Speaking of which, I can announce this now. If you guys are fans of the channel and you happen to be a fan of wrestling, August 5th, SummerSlam, it's a Saturday night. I'm going to be going live and we're going to be talking SummerSlam that whole night while the show's going on. So I figured for all the what rest of What day is that? That's a Saturday night. What what day? August 5th. Oh, August 5th. Okay. It's actually my last day of my vacation. Oh, I right? won't be home. Oh, good. So you don't have to Wait, worry. no, I might be home. Mostly. So, but anyway, we'll be talking all things SummerSlam that night live from Detroit and live from this office so we'll be talking about it that night so that's another announcement and make sure you guys are keeping up with the channel this week because we're going to have reviews from barbie oppenheimer 
uh, Breathless on 4K, To Live and Die in LA on 4K, to Hugo on 4K, and, and me and Faith might do a review next weekend for because she's really excited for this movie, uh, They Clone Tyrone. Oh yeah! So, we got a lot wait. coming up. That movie looks so good. I'm glad. I, I'm happy to see Jamie Fox. Yeah. You know. We saw. Did you see that they actually got a video of him last week? Yeah. So. <laughs> he passing by in a boat. So there was a, a picture that somebody posted, and it was like, "Oh, Jamie Fox," and the, the picture did not look anything like Jamie Fox. I'm like, that is not Jamie Fox. People are, need to stop. They're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all coming up in the next week. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel, and make sure you give this video a like. And if you're listening to us on the podcast services make sure you give us a five star rating there so they start to help pushing the podcast that really does help and the channel what would you got again you know we ask us every week give us more ideas of yeah. what you guys more would jumping off see. points yeah yeah that's yeah. what we're here to do we're here to provide a service and that service is us so anyway guys thank you so much for being here with us on another episode of let's talk physical media we will be seeing you around